We're back with uh, Chalk Talk with Jerry Hanlon, Coach Hanlon. Uh, you're, you're still seeing some things on uh, Michigan's offense that, that just aren't quite clicking. You, you saw a little bit better running game against Northwestern, uh, but still some things that are uh, causing problems. So I thought uh, we'd just kind of turn you loose this week and, uh, and let you uh, show some things that, that you are seeing that are still giving problems. Well, John, I, I hate to, to kibitz on, on offensive line play if I don't know exactly what they're teaching and what they're trying to do. But from what I'm seeing, a couple of things that I have noticed is that uh, we, we're sometimes hesitant to know who we're supposed to block. And then other times, we're, we're kind of, we we're, know what we're supposed to do, but we're, we're kind of reaching for fairy tales or there's nothing there and so I'll just give you an idea what I'm trying to say by that. For instance, if we're running a, a, a zone play in this situation, when you run zone blocking, the idea is you try to hook the man who's in your particular area, but you've got to make sure that if you hook your man, can the next man into your inside hook his man and so those are the things you've got to try to make sure you're trying to do. For instance, if I'm going to lead a zone play to this side, we're going to try to hook that man with that man right there. And our tie tackle is going to go out and try to get to that man. And this man, who plays a little bit wider than I've got him drawn, he's going to try to be hooked by him. And then to the back side, we have the same situation. He's going to go and try to go up to the linebacker. He's going to try to hook him and so forth. The problems you get into is that if you can't get one of the guys hooked, then you've got to make a cutback on the play. So it's, for instance, if this guy decides you're not going to hook him, he's going to run upfield, that's very difficult. You can't hardly protect him. So if the ball is then to be forced back to the inside, somewhere along the line, you've got to get a cutoff block in order to make sure that you have a cutback. In this particular situation, it would be very difficult for this man who also would fight to the outside. He's fighting to the outside. He's fighting to the outside. And if you let, this guy can come from the backside and make the play. So what they've done is they're going to force the ball to be there, and you don't have any place along the line of scrimmage where you said, we're going to stop this. For instance, I wouldn't lead that center in that position. I would go like this, and the center that I would go to these two, and then seal. So that now, when that ball starts and it can't go there, I've sealed the backside, there's a chance to make the cutback in that situation. So zone blocking is fine if you get it outside, but if you can't break contain, you've got to have somewhere there's a seal so you can make the cutback. We're having a difficult time of making any cutbacks because everybody is just keep floating to the outside and the ball has no place to go. Uh, and the, uh, the other thing that situation is, is that when we put, sometimes we put two or three tackles into the ball game and when you do that, you understand that those two tackles is usually where you want to run. But when you run there, you put a safety over here, and that safety looks in and says, that's a tackle, he's not eligible, so therefore, he no longer be worries about pass, and so even if you block this play very well, you've got an extra guy because he doesn't have pass coverage coming up and getting into the hole and giving you some problems. So those are a couple of things that I see that are happening. And somehow or other, you've got to be able to take care of that. If he wants to come up, then you throw a little pass behind him or something of that nature. In pass protection, the problem here again is they do a lot of zone pass protection. And when you zone pass protect, you, you set to protect an area. But if you set to protect an area and don't worry about the guy in your area, uh, a, a guy coming to your area, you've got problems again. For instance, <coughs> If we're going to set for a zone protection, we would, they would all set to the inside like this and, and just protect any, he takes anybody that comes in that zone, he takes, he takes, he takes, and he, but the problem you get into when you do those kind of things, when you zone down, you leave one of the best defensive brushers out here alone and he's coming on your back 
to, to rush the passer. And so it puts your back in a very tough situation. So zone pass protection is fine, but I think sometimes when you got, even if you were zoning this way and coming this way with the ball, then I would say make a call and let your big tackle step out and let him take that in, and then your back, as he comes, he will be able to pick up if somebody else comes from the inside. So that puts you back in a lot of hard times. The other thing is that when you do set on your pass protection, don't leave an area. In other words, if this guy, they do this kind of stuff a lot, and if I set to block him, and he goes there, really goes hard, and he's setting the block there, then I turn and go like that. When you turn and go like that, then if this man blitzes, you're not in any position to help. As you set, let him go and stay square, help where you need it, and then when this guy comes, you're able to come back in. Don't turn and chase him. And we're doing a lot of that. Our shoulders get turned, and we're trying to chase a guy instead of, uh-oh, he's gone away. Set back and see if I, he needs help. I'll help him. If not, make sure nobody comes to the backside. So those are some of the things I see in pass protection. And the other thing is, is that uh, uh, we're putting off a lot of pressure on that back trying to take on a big guy on occasion. You speak of that back. Let me throw you a little curveball real quick. Um, you've seen a lot of backs and a lot of good runners, but who are a couple uh, or at least one of uh, the best pass protecting backs that you have seen come through at Michigan? Oh gosh, there are so many of them, John. I heard somebody mention Mike Hart, yeah. and even though he was a small little guy, he was able to stay to get low and take a guy on and chop him on a lot of situations. It's a matter of technique. If if he's coming hard and you don't want to stand there and stand right up there and take you just chop him, you cut him down. Then the next time he tries to do that, then you, you're able to stay up because he's not going to come so hard. He's going to try to juke you. Now you can use your agility to keep staying in front of him. So you change it up. Uh, there's been several really good backs for us. The uh, fact is, Coach Burton said, you don't block, you don't play. And that's as simple as that. You had to be a good pass blocker. Uh, as well as a run blocker if you're going to play in, this, in the backfield. All right. We'll talk more about that uh, down the road. But for now, uh, thanks for joining us, Coach. Well, I enjoyed it. Thank you, John.